Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Look at this. Here we are on the afternoon, much brighter in the house here. <laughs> My name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws, and this is uh, our, well, we're, it's our Saturday afternoon when I'm drawing this. Uh, kind of a makeup for last Wednesday, but uh, should all be going well. So today I've got a real treat for you. We're going to be drawing the Bride of Frankenstein. We're going to show you how to, I'm going to teach you how to draw this step by step. Hey Lynn, how are you doing? And uh, we're going to look at uh, the way to tilt ahead and try and get some nice construction down and then move into adding contrast and volume and uh, uh, mass and it should turn out and value and it should turn out quite nice once we're done so anyways I'm glad you're here if you are interested in more lessons um, we do have I do have a great class called the daily draw the link is down in the descriptions you could check that out hey Ebony how are you <laughs> uh, you could check that out and we also have a uh, uh, we also have a uh, Facebook group that you could join very active and we're all about trying to learn how to draw um, on a regular basis so with that being said let's let's get into this so before i start let's just talk about some basic head ideas some basic head construction because if you get the right angle right right from the beginning then that kind of points you in the right direction but if you don't get those angles right at the beginning, you will kind of uh, go off in a different direction than what you had anticipated. So let's try and keep this as simple as possible, but uh, it will, it, it will, let's just see where we go with this. So let's start off with three ovals, all right? And there's a common practice that I like to do when I'm drawing ahead and it goes like this 3d 2d 3d and then the place placement of the face so let me show you what i mean by those and these are always if if you're familiar with this it's it's always great to review because uh you always seem to pick up something brand new hey chris how are you my friend so what do i mean by 2d 2d is when you take a look at the head and the first thing you must determine is is the head leaning to the left or is it leaning to the right? And I, I put this, I put my pencil, my Apple pencil here coming out of my head to try and show you that. So uh, that's the first thing you want to determine. So let's say this is A, B, and C, all right? So let's say A is slightly going in that direction. That is the 2D axis. And let's say B is going in the opposite opposite direction and C will give it also slightly off center all right <clears throat> now once once you determine the 2d axis whether it's going to the left or going to the right once once you determine that th now you have to think of is the axis is the head coming forward or is it going back you see that so we show that we show that by drawing the eye line all right or the brow line and if this head is going back I'm going to be looking up at it so it's gonna have that that idea that the head is leaning backward in B let's say the head here is leaning forward so the brow line is going to come like this and let's see C it's neither leaning forward nor back so we're just gonna we're just going to go straight. So we've determined our 2D axis and we've just determined our 3D axis. And now it's time to determine where along the brow line is the face. Okay. So let's look at A and let's say the, the center line and, and the way that we indicate this is looking for the center line and this where I have the uh, pencil positioned on my face that is the center line you see that so if I go like this or if I go like this you could see that the center line follows along the center of my face so let's say this is going in that direction 
And then let's come over to B and say the center line is over here. And on C, all right, so let's say the center line is just, just right about there. Okay, so that's, that's the placement of the face. <clears throat> Once we establish those three, let's look for the temples. What are the temples? Temples are right here. If you take your fingers and follow your eyebrows back to the corners, you could feel two nodes coming out of your, uh, that are part of your skull, and they're on the outside part of your eyes. These are, these are what we would call landmarks, okay? And from these two points, everything, I'm gonna use these two points and my center line to help build the construction of my face. So on A, let's say, one temple's there, and then the other one is going to be over here. And it, it's just so that you know, this is a three-quarter view. And when you have three-quarter view, if I turn my head like this, this is a three-quarter view that you could see. This whole area by face, because it's further away from you, is going to be all, it's going to be compacted. Where this side is going to be stretched. You see that? Now, if I look straight at the camera, you can see it's pretty even to both sides. And then if I turn my face slightly this way, you're going to get the different, you're going to get just the opposite effect, all right? So let's come down here to B. All right, so we're going to do that. You can see that this, this distance is a little bit shorter than that distance. And C, let's come over here and we'll shorten that up as well, like that. <clears throat> you may have also heard, this is temp the temples. Next thing you want to look for is the T of the face. The T is the face, and you can actually see it in my drawings already, is, is the T that is created by a line between the temples and a line coming straight down. You see that? So here is the T of the face. Here is the T of the face. And here as well. All right. So this is the next step. Now we want to, once we've established this, now we want to create the sides of the face. Faces, the head is interesting in, in that if I look straight at the camera, the sides of my head are relatively flat. But when I turn my head in profile, now the head is very round. All right, so we want to keep this in mind because then when you get to a point where you're going in three quarter view, one side of your head is going to be flat, but the other side is going to be very round. So let's start in A here. So this means that this side is going to be somewhat flat. And this side's going to be round. You see that? This side's going to be slightly flat. And then we're going to see the back side here. This side is slightly, still going to be slightly flat. But we are definitely going to, it's going to be more round coming around this way. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's, let's add a, a little bit of uh, mass or, uh, or construction. Look on A. Let's create this. This side of the face is also going to be flat. So we're just going to pretend like we cut off the side of the sphere right there. Same thing, same thing with D. And this, this goes right through the temple. Right through the, the temple signifies the corner of the skull. The front and then the sides, okay? Same thing over here on C. All right, let's go ahead then and, and come down on A here. <clears throat> let's establish where this chin might be, okay? And one way you could do that is usually usually the head can be divided this way in that it's almost thirds from the 
from the hairline to the brow line underneath the nose to the chin okay so that's a general rule of measurement so let's just kind of kind of use that as we establish where the chin is so there's there's the bottom of the chin there's the bottom of the nose there's the brow line and then the hairline is going to be somewhat up there see thirds one two three all right let's look look at b so let's see the hairline is going to be about there i think there's the brow line there's the nose and there's the bottom of the chin let's look over here on c there's the uh, hairline brow line nose bottom of the chin All right, now with all those pieces in place, we can actually come in here with a slight, a slight curve here. Nice slight sweep up here. On B, we could drop just a little bit for the corner of the jaw right there. You can feel it. This is gonna sweep around there that's going to sweep around drop this down sweep around and sweep around okay so those 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 processes that i just showed you what you want to do is keep those in your memory and be able to draw them um, from memory and just practice that over and over again. These will be the basis for you to then start to build the face and your features on top of just by going through this general process of, of drawing the heads, okay? All right. With that being said, let's move over to our picture today and see how we do. Let's now the one the one thing in particular the one thing particular about this photo and I think you have to think about this before you're coming home coming into it is that the lighting is not typical. The lighting's coming from below. So typically when we draw a face the lighting's coming either from one side or the other or it's coming like the sun coming from above. But when it's coming from below, it kind of messes with some of our observational skills as far as the masses go. So we'll just, it's slightly different, but we'll get through this, okay? So let's go ahead and start with a round sphere. First thing we have to determine is the 2D axis. So from our angle here, uh, is she is her head tilting left or is it tilting right? I think her head actually is is straight up and down, okay? Let me just let me think this through. It is straight up and down or the tilt, there is no 2D axis. I'll show you what's going to happen here in just a second. It's it's at the 3D axis where something is happening because she is her head's coming forward. It's, she's leaning forward. So really, what we want to do here, I'm going to erase that line. Try and get this as accurate as possible. All right, that that looks pretty good to me. All right, that's the that's the axis that I see that her 2D axis. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and get this, uh, uh, the brow line in place. Okay, here's my brow line right here. <clears throat> the 
it's going to be the let's, let's determine where the face placement is now on this so I'm going to come in if this is the side of her head her face placement is going to be somewhere in here In fact, I'm going to even change mine ever so slightly as I'm looking at it closer. And this happens. I think her head's tilting a little bit. And this is where tilting a little bit to her left. How do I know this? That's a great question. I know this by I'm looking at the position of her temples toward each other. So let me, let me demonstrate that for you. So we have one temple here, okay? And then the other one is down here. You see that? So that ends up making this T going down. It's at, it's at this point of the drawing where you really want to get these, these proportions right these angles right because if you get these angles right at the very e at this point you could erase stuff and adjust stuff okay so that's the first look okay let's also look at where the position of her of that t is look at that right there that's going to go right through her lips underneath her nose Okay, I think that looks pretty good right there. And remember when we were just talking about the side of her face? Look at look how straight of a line that is over over there. So let's let's kind of get that nice angle here. Okay. All right, let's get the side of her head here. We're just trying to get a sense of this volume here. Okay, that's going to be her jaw coming down. See now this is this is where you want to get at to where you can now look at the general mass and angle of your face and if it's wrong if it's wrong this is where you want to adjust it it's too hard to adjust it once you start jumping into all of the uh, features get it at this basic basic place and now this will give you a very strong strong foundation to build the rest of it upon all right I am going to, let's see now, I just want to, all right. We're going to get to her hair after we focus on her head first, all right? And I'm going to increase the size of mine just so you could see things a little bit more clear, okay? One last thing I'll say before we move forward with this. This this form that I've just created, you know, when I'm drawing a face, I will try draw, I don't draw all of this, but this is definitely in my mind. I'll draw parts of it, all right? It's the foundation that's in my mind. So just, you keep putting this down on paper until you really start to feel comfortable with this. And then you could branch off and eliminate parts of it 
as long as you're thinking about it that's that's what's most important all right let's go ahead and get a position of, of maybe her nose oops all right let's get the I'm gonna come in here now and think of the visor what's the visor this is the part, this is where the eyes are going to lie. And where is this on our picture? Let me show you. It's right in here. Okay. This is going to uh, follow follow the surface. Let's build out the barrel of the mouth. The barrel of the mouth goes below, behind the nose and behind the chin. And then the chin sits on top of that. All right, let's start getting some of these more subtle details in. So let's start with her nose. going to be the underside of her nose. I'm going to go get a cup of coffee and I'll let you add that to your drawing. Let's get these eyes in here. And then this eye is going to be over here. Now, as, as I'm looking at my drawing, immediately I can see that I have a problem going, and this just happens. <laughs> this happens to all of us. I've I think the I've extended the bottom of the nose to her chin too much here. So again, this is the perfect time to make an adjustment instead of uh, instead of waiting. So I'm gonna oop, I'm gonna cut some of this off here. All right, that's what I'm going to go with right there. All right, that's going to get a little bit smaller. All right, I like that better. Okay, let's get this, let's work on this mouth here. And let's start with this corner here. The other corner is going to come around because it's, it's, it's going around that barrel of the mouth okay and let's <clears throat> let's get these lips in here now so we're going to start in the middle and it's like the letter m watch there's one and there's the other It's 
coming down and then this is coming up this is almost vertical on the outside here And then the bottom lip extends a little bit further than the top lip. <clears throat> and typically when you're drawing lips, usually the top lip, you know, usually this is what happens when you're drawing lips. Usually, usually it's the top lip that is in shadow. A little bit lighter than the, the top lip is usually a little bit darker than the bottom lip. That's because the bottom lip is catching the sun. But in this case, just the opposite is happening because she is lit, being lit from the bottom. So uh, the bottom part is actually darker than the top part. Let's work on this nose here just a bit. There's the center line of the nose. And you can see her nostrils coming like this. I'm going to erase some of these lines here. These lines should be guides. They're just guides. <clears throat> and then when we build this, the top part of that nose, let's just look for the shape, the shape of that shadow. Okay. <clears throat> Just making some adjustments. We'll come back and adjust it even more here in just a minute. Let's get these eyes in and I'm going to look for the corners, the corner of these eyes and look, look at this, look at the relationship there. There is one corner and, and look how much lower that other corner is. There's this corner and this one's a little bit higher over there. You see that? Put these in, these will give you guides. Now when I draw my eyeballs, I like to think of the eyelids going over, going over the eyeball, okay? Just like this. All right, this, this one over here is short, and then it wraps around the eyeball. OK, 
Okay, let's get these pupils in now. When I draw my pupil, sometimes I will look for the negative, the negative shape. Okay, what do you, what do I mean by the negative shape? <clears throat> this is the negative shape I'm looking for. Let me zoom in. <clears throat> I'm really kind of looking for this that shape as I'm drawing my pupils in, okay? <clears throat> now her upper eyelids are very dark because all that mascara she's wearing. And the other thing that you could see, I noticed right away, is you really can get a sense of the upper, the upper eyelid. And what I mean by that is this. Look at look at this right here. This comes in like this. Oops, what am I doing here? All right. And this is, this actually is the very thing that is telling your brain that her, that she is being lit from the bottom. Because you could see that highlight on her upper eyelid. That is not normal. You know, usually don't see that. You actually see the high highlight on the bottom eyelid. Hello, Edmund. <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? All right, let's get this lower, this pad that's underneath that her left eye, and let's do the same on the other side. Now I'm going to have to erase some of my marks from earlier on. Because I'm looking at the... Uh, value here so what, what's happening is is as you see that we've we got the right angle of face and now it's fun to uh now it's fun to you know now we're just manipulating the smaller areas of form but at least we got the right direction going you see All right, let's get these let's get these eyebrows in because they are exciting. So it's she has this S curve going on here, and then the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to come in and erase some of this here because I don't need it anymore. Okay, there's another interesting shadow going on here.
Now this is interesting. Look, look, look at this. I've got to zoom in here so you can see what I'm looking at. Let's change the color. So look at that right there. So this is this is the pad of her eye, and you can see how light it is there. And then it gets dark right right here, and then it gets light again. Almost, it's almost like you have this stair step that's coming down, and then this this has some value to it, and then it goes back down again. You see that? It's like this stair step that's coming down. Watch now when I remove the green, take a look at it. You see? So let's. Let's let's use that because that's going to help tell the story here. So let's see. It's going to come around her cheek here. And I'm going to erase some of this here. I think for me this is what makes portraiture so much fun is you you get to a point where you just really start to uh, enjoy these details so let's talk about that for a minute I guarantee you you will all get here it just takes time and you can't be that hard on yourself okay because if you have these grand or huge expectations, you may not you may get so discouraged that you quit altogether, never to draw a portrait again. And you don't want to do that. It just takes perseverance and time. Alright? Just just like how I keep messing up this eyeball. <laughs> Let's see here. What's going on, Mr. Kurt? All right. That's that's better. She's kind of looking down. I know it's different from the picture, but let's see here. <clears throat> All right, let's continue on. All right, let's look for her brow line now. So her brow line, side of her head's going to come up here, and I'm looking. I'm looking at the negative shape in here. Hair is going to come down like this. Just kind of following the form. You see my jaw. I, I've drawn my jaw too far back. And the way that I know this. See what I'm doing is, is I'm just kind of looking at this negative space. Trying to match that. Then I'm kind of looking for this distance right there. Trying to match that. And then I'm looking for this distance. I'm trying to match that. Do you see that? All right, so let's see. We're going to come down. I got that. Got that. And I'm looking for that cheek area there. Okay. Okay, there's some adjustments that I've made. 
I'm going to come back in a little bit and erase some of these lines to lighten, lighten this up. I would go through the same process if I was just using traditional pencil. The only thing differently with using a pencil or something than this is that I would try and draw a little bit more lighter and sometimes when you draw digitally it's hard to uh, maintain a certain level of softness unless if you uh, you know use that in layers but I, I like trying with you guys as we're drawing together I'm trying to avoid layers that's true many small steps take you a long ways All right, let's, let's go ahead and get her neck in next. So let's see, her neck is coming in right, right in here, okay? So we've got the front end there. And now let's, let's use a vertical measurement and determine where the back of it. So that's where, that's where the back of her neck is coming in contact with the back of her skull. And if I look out and use a horizontal measurement. Oh, it looks looks like it goes right through her nose. So let's stay here and we're going to come all the way back just like this. Okay. Let's curve that around. And then the next uh, mark I want to do here Where, where does that, where is that lining up? Oh, look, it's, it's right at her chin. Okay. Okay. That, that looks appropriate. Let's get rid of this. Curving around, curving around like this. Now I'm going to outline the shadow. And add a tone to this. Okay, let's look at her chin. I can see a slight, her chin is coming around like this. Slight shadow at the top of it. And mine, it should be coming back a little bit more. So I'm making, these are the minor adjustments I'm making right now. I'm going to add a little more tone to the top of her lip here because look at the very at the very tip of her lip you could see the top of her lip she's getting this little highlight so we want to we definitely want to capture that
All right, let's add some more tone in her face here. So we've got some uh, forehead. It's coming down like this. I'm looking at the general shape of the tone. toning a lot of this back because I want that I want those lower highlights to really pop get this real drama here Still more. Okay, let's think about our ear. Bottom of the ear is lining up with the middle of the nose. Top of the ear is top of the eye. Okay. Now, let's make it a little bit smaller and deal with this hair here in the closing closing minutes. But let's have a little fun with this hair. So, I'm going to think of this hair as almost like a, a cylinder going back in space. All right, so I'm going to just get that angle there. I'll curve it out in just a minute. All right, let's look at this. Uh, I'm going to use a guide here to get the, take some time and get the uh, the little white part going back here and get it as really accurate. So let's let's just get the outside edges, the outside shape. This is going to help guide us when we draw this. Now, I'm going to put a line. I'm going to draw a couple lines here. I'm going to draw one to represent that, and that, that, and that, okay? The peak, the peak of those things. That's right. A lot of hard, if you have the hard edges, it's going to really show um, uh, the hard lighting. It's not soft lighting at all. All right, so here's that's a good good observation. <laughs> it is, Chris. You are right. The up light is completely opposite. All right, so there's. I'm going to put these guide these lines in here. Help guide me. Okay. Now, this is what I want you to uh, watch here. Now watch this. Watch this line. Get this line down. So it's going to come up, down. Look at this line right here. That's what we're looking for. Okay? So let's draw that as accurate as possible, that purple line.
right? Look at look how squiggly mine is. That's okay. That's a that's a great starting point. We can I can come in here and curve that up a bit. All right. <clears throat> now let's use some surface lines here and <clears throat> I know this is white. So let's let's see what we can do here. I'm going to come in here. And then and then drawing the negative here. I'm going to add a little bit of tone to help my eyes see what I want it to see. Okay. And this is going to come down like this. And then we're going to come back up again. And then come back down. Okay, I'm going to do some surface lines now. Drawing the negative, just adding some tone in the negative. It's these, <clears throat> it's these little details you really want to nail. This is probably the most iconic hairstyle for, you know, you see this stripe and you can't help but only think of the Bride of Frankenstein. I'm going to add this shape. Wait, wet lines. Okay, Lynn, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just looked up. Uh, lines, what am I, what am I, okay, so... I'm thinking when I'm drawing this, let me, let me, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to draw this from my mom. Excellent. All right, Lynn. Let's, let's back up here for a second. Um, I'm trying to think of where to go. To, all right. You know what I'm going to do, Lynn? I'm going to, I'm just going to erase what I've done here. And I'm going to start fresh. And that's okay. It's okay because... It's Saturday afternoon, we've got time, there's no rush, and we'll start fresh of drawing this, and, and that's okay, because we're gonna learn something again, all right? So just let's walk through this step by step, okay? This is why I love to teach live because if something comes up like this, I can stop and do it again. All right, so this is what I'm thinking here. <clears throat> First thing, I'm going to draw the outside shape of this, okay? So I'm looking, it kind of starts. It starts right there and starts right there, okay? Right there and right there. And this is kind of kind of just kind of come around. It's almost a straight line up on top there. This is going to circle around here and go around the back. This this kind of gives me some guidelines. All right. First step. All right, next step, I'm going to look for this. I'm going to put these, these are like the high points of this ribbon that's going back, all right? That's going to also help me with a guide. So 
let's curve it around like this. Okay, I got that one. All right, there's the next one. There's that one, and there's the fourth one. All right. <clears throat> All right, now look at this. Here's, here's this. I'm going to try and follow this line. That's going to give me the bottom edge of this thing, all right? So here we go. Okay, let's let's follow that now. Look at the top here. Here we go. I'm just gonna ride this, ride this across. I'm kind of keeping, I'm keeping my eye on the bottom shape here. I'm trying to mirror it. Let's, let's just follow this with surface lines. Okay, next one. Let's follow that with surface lines. Do the next one. And the last. Okay. Now let's let's take a look at let's look at her hair, the the shape of her hair. Now, this top part of her hair is extremely dark. And and look how look how look over here. I'm going to come up here and just show you this one area. Look, this is the side of her head, but yet you see her hair starts starts so much lower like that so let's let's do that to ours okay I'll leave that up there so you can kind of see where I'm going with this so it's gonna come I'm gonna come all the way down here and overall this this whole mass is gonna be very dark This should be as dark as your uh, pupils. Okay, and I'm just going to give some shape, just some slight shape to her, the outside here. Okay. 
Give you a minute there. <clears throat> right above her ear here. Look how dark this is. Coming in this whole area here is very dark. Just adding, adding a little tone to her ear. And behind her ear, now so this is going to change tone a little bit. It's not quite as dark, but still dark enough to make a lot of contrast against her back end of her neck. Hair is also dark where it comes in contact with this stripe at the bottom. This is picking up some of the light back here. So we just want to make sure that this top area is really dark. Now you can come back in. I'm just adding some curls down here for some variety at the bottom of her hair. thing I think I'm going to do is just add some more surface lines to this curl, this curl. I, Going slow. <laughs> I say that, and I can just imagine some of you saying, No, you're not. You're going too fast. She has a lot, for mine, she has a lot more mascara on the bottom of this eye. I think I'm going to add a little bit more. You know, this is, this is where you start to make these additional adjustments in your drawing. Things that you like.
And I'm just kind of going through now, just adding some small, subtle things. I think that's going to do it. Okay. Well, listen, I really appreciate you guys watching today. And Lynn, I, I hope that helped redefine that for you. My name is Kurt. I'm a dad who draws. And this, is, this has been uh, How to Draw the Bride of Frankenstein. Thanks for watching, everyone. Do give a thumbs up and please give a comment. I do appreciate it. I'll see you guys later. Have a great weekend. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone.